I took Google's four hours AI prompting course so you don't have to and turned it into this 10 minutes video for you by removing all the fluff. If you've been following the news lately, you would have heard that a lot of companies are laying off people because of AI. Artificial intelligence is presenting a real challenge to the American workforce. A fresh new report shows more than 10,000 jobs have been cut so far this year due to the rise of generative AI. So if you want to stay competitive in today's job market, then this video is for you. I'm going to deliver you value upfront here. If you've heard of the 80-20 principle, module one of this course is the 20% that will give you 80% of the value. The whole course is based off it. So if you want to click out afterwards, that's fine, but watch module one and you'll get the most value out of this video. Here is the course structure and what you will learn today. Module one, start writing prompts like a pro. You'll learn the five steps prompting framework that allows you to write the best prompts for any AI tools you're working with. Module two, design prompts for everyday work tasks. This module will help you save time at work. You'll design prompts that will help you draft emails and adapt to them for different audiences. Supercharge your brainstorming. Quickly build tables and trackers. Turn meeting notes into action items and summarize lengthy documents. So you're always up to date with the latest market trends. Module three is about speeding up data analysis and presentation building. You'll design prompts that help you extract insights Sites, understand spreadsheet formulas or debug them and build graphs to visualize data. Once you're ready to present your findings, you can use AI tools to help with speaker notes and practice before your big day. Module four, use AI as a creative or expert partner. You will learn how to use advanced prompting techniques like prompt chaining and chain of thought prompting to turn abstract ideas into step-by-step -step solutions. Even better, you will learn how to create a personalized AI agent to role-play conversations with you and provide feedback that can help you prepare for any scenarios. Although module one is where you'll get 80% of the benefit of this course and video, module four is where you will really learn how powerful AI can be by designing agents. So if you want to be in the top 1% and make sure that you get that new job or promotion, make sure that you stick around for module four. Before looking at module one, here is one really useful tip that Google gives us in the course. Create your own prompt library. I'll put a screenshot of what it looks like on the screen. As you follow along, you can add new prompts to your library, update them and save them for later use. All right, let's look at module one. First thing, what actually is prompting? Prompting is the process of providing instructions to a generative AI tool to either receive new information or to achieve a desired outcome on a task. Those instructions are called prompts. And the best way to write those prompts is to use this five steps framework. Define the task, give it context, add references, evaluate the output, and iterate on the original prompt. Task is what you want the AI to do. Start with a verb, add a persona that you want the AI to take, and give it the output format that you want your results in. An example of a task could be, give me ideas of a tech-related gift for my friend's birthday. This is what it came up with. But if you define a persona and tell it what sort of output you want, the results are better. Example, give me ideas for a tech-related gift for my friend's birthday. You are a tech expert, like MKBHD, and know everything about the latest technology. Give me your suggestions in a table format, specifying the tech, what's good about it, and why a friend might like it as a birthday present. 10 ideas are enough. Much better, right? Context. As a rule, the more context you provide, the better the output. Here is an example of context to add to our prompt. For some context, my friend is turning 30 and is passionate about computers and sci-fi. On my end, I would like to keep the expense under $100. Reference, if you have example gifts of what you've given your friend before, that's where you add them. Sometimes describing what you want as a task and context is hard. Examples make it clear. And AI is especially good at learning from examples. And that's it when it comes to writing the prompt itself. Let's see what we've got. Not bad, right? Next step is evaluate. Here you review the output that the AI gave you. Sometimes AI can make up stuff called hallucination, or it can be biased because of the data that the AI model was trained on. So there must always be a person reviewing the output. The terminology for it is human in the loop. If after review, the output suits your needs, great. If not, 
Then the last step of the framework is iterate. Prompting is rarely one and done. It's often circular. You must refine your prompt over time to get what you want. You could even start simple, see what the AI gives you, then add persona, context, and reference to keep improving the prompt, just like we did before. The course calls it ABI always be iterating. The course is full of mnemonics. They even have one to remember the five-step framework. Thoughtfully create really excellent inputs. I find that hard to remember, so I use Taco Rev it. It's like you asking a friend Taco to rev the car. And with that mental image is how I remember the five-step framework. And of course, TA stands for task, CO stands for context, RE stands for reference, EV stands for evaluate, it IT stands for iterate. Whatever works for you, just memorize and remember the framework because everything else in the course is based off it. Going back to always be iterating for a second, the course suggests four iteration method. Method one is about revisiting the framework. You look at your original prompt, then you add more references, give it a persona, add more context, and hopefully you get a better output. Method two, break the prompt into shorter sentences. Think of AI like a person. If you word vomit, it might find it hard to understand what you're after. But if instead you feed it instructions one step at a time, see what comes back, then give it some more, it might come up with a better output for you. Method three, try different phrasing or shift to an analogous task. Here is an example. Let's say you ask the AI to produce specs for your software product and it comes back with something bland. Switch your ask. Instead, ask it to list acceptance criteria for the main features, including edge cases. Then tell it to expand on those acceptance criteria into a full spec, including overview, user stories, flows, metrics, open questions, etc. You might be surprised with the output that you get. Method four, introduce constraints. If you're allowed to do anything, often it's hard to hit the target. It's like asking, what should we eat tonight? Often the answer that comes back is, mm, I don't know. But if instead you say, let's eat healthy tonight and let's not go that far. You do a Google search and find that there are only two healthy restaurants within 100 meters from where you are. Now you can just ask the group, do you prefer the beef focused restaurant or the chicken one? Do the same with AI. Write a marketing email. That's probably too blind. So add constraints. Write a marketing email with 120 words maximum, a friendly tone. Mention 10% off. Give one call to action link. The subject should be under 45 characters. With tighter rules, you get a better output. What about multimodal prompting? What's that? We usually type to AI, that's fine. But newer models also take pictures, audio files, videos, and code as input. And they can output those too. Multimodal just means different media types. Your framework does not change for those. We still use task, context, reference, evaluate, iterate. Multimodal just makes your input and output richer. Here are cool examples of multimodal prompts. You just had a whiteboarding session. Take a picture of your messy whiteboard, put it in your AI tool and ask it to give you a document describing what's on the board and a slide deck with that information that you could use to present later. Another example, you could upload your product photos and your brand colors and ask AI to give you a promo image based off those and a caption. You could paste in a CSV file and ask it for charts based off the file and a 30 seconds voiceover that explains the key highlights of the file. Okay, that was the 20% of the video that gives you 80% of the benefit. Now you could bounce or you could watch the next five minutes and get a very solid understanding of prompting, as well as more examples to put in your prompt library. Module two, design prompts for everyday work tasks to save time at work. This section is mostly use cases built on top of the five step framework, which is again task, context, reference, evaluate, and iterate. It shows how to use AI for emails, summarizing texts, brainstorming ideas, building schedules, and taking meeting notes. But to be honest, if you've memorized the prompting framework, most of the examples shown are quite intuitive and easy to figure out on your own. But we'll visit an example in a second. Two thoughtful tips in this module though. Number one, instead of asking, what can I do with AI? Ask, what am I already doing? that AI can help with. This question will help you optimize your workflow and your life. Number two, depending on the audience for your emails and summaries, specify the tone and style you want the AI to use. Here is an example of a marketer working on a video game launch.
don't forget to add this example to your prompt library. Maybe take a screenshot and type it out later, or just append the screenshot. Module 3, Data Analysis and Presentations. Module 3 was similar to Module 2. More examples, but this time for data analysis and presentations. One example that the Google instructor gave was attached is a Google sheet of store data. How can I create a new column in the sheet that calculates the average sales per customer for each store? Quite simple, right? But here's a tip. If you're using big Excel files and there's an error in it, you can paste the Excel file as well as the error in AIs like Gemini or ChatGPT and ask them to help you debug the problem. But always remember to review your company's policy before putting in data into these tools. Also, the output that you get from the AI is going to be as good as the input you give it. So before data is entered into the tool, ensure it's up to date, consistent, accurate, relevant, complete, and bias free. Module 4. This was the second most valuable module in the course after Module 1. It teaches what they're calling some advanced prompting techniques and how to create AI agents to help you simulate and prepare for real life scenarios. Let's look at the advanced prompting techniques first. Prompt chaining is writing a prompt, again, using our framework, task, context, reference, evaluate, iterate, getting an output from the prompt and using that output in the next prompt. These linked prompts help to solve a complex problem step by step. The example they give is this. If you've taken time off work and need to catch up on what you've missed, you could prompt an AI tool to summarize your emails and any documents you received while you were away. After reviewing the output, you may want to prompt it again to focus on time-sensitive requests. If the new output reveals an urgent issue, you could prompt the AI again on some solution on how to solve it, and on and on. Next is chain of thought and tree of thought prompting. Chain of thought prompting is when you ask the AI to show their reasoning so you can learn or spot hallucinations along the way. Just like a math teacher asking you to show your work instead of just writing the answer. Tree of thought prompting means asking the tool to explore multiple reasoning paths at once, just like branches growing on a tree. Let's say a prompt gives you three options to a problem. The AI could say, if you do option one, this happens. If you do option two, this happens. If you do option three, it will result in those five options. And for each of those five options, this would happen. Here is an example that tells the AI to score the options and then to stop its analysis. Give me three ways to launch our app. PR, influencer, paid. For each, list three steps, risk and cost. Then score each plan on a scale of zero to 10 on reach, cost, and speed. Keep the top two and expand each with a one week timeline and KPIs. Stop when both timelines are done. These prompting techniques have fancy name, but they're not that complex. Meta prompting. This is when you ask an AI to write a prompt for another AI. Here is an example I use all the time. If you want to prompt an AI tool to generate really cool images, the prompt needs to be very descriptive. So instead of writing straight into Midjourney or DaVinci AI, I asked ChatGPT to write me a prompt for these tools by just describing in a few lines what kind of image I actually want. Then ChatGPT would spit me a prompt that I copy paste into Leonardo AI or Midjourney. Now let's create an AI agent with the right prompting technique. You can transform your AI tool into a team of experts ready to help you take on any challenges. These are called AI agents and you can create different AI agents depending on what you need. Examples, a coding partner, a creative sounding board, or an accountability body to keep you on track with your goals. One example given in the course was Agent Sim. That's just the name that gave the agent. It's an agent for simulating career development scenarios. Prepare for interviews, role play difficult conversations, so the user can practice and learn. To make these agents effective, you need to provide a lot of background information and detail about the person that they should take on. And you need to specify the type of conversations you want to have. Here is the prompt for Agent Sim. Act as a career development training simulator. Your task is to help interns master interview skills and conduct conversations with potential managers. You need to support the following types of conversations. Articulating strength and skills. Communicating professionally and confidently. Discussing future career development goals. 
Once an intern has picked a conversation topic, provide details about the situation and the interviewer's role. Then act as the interviewer and allow the intern to participate as the employee. Make sure to guide the conversation in a way that will allow the intern to exercise their interview skills. Continue the role play until the intern replies with Jazz Hands. After the intern gives the stop rule Jazz Hands, provide them with the key takeaways from the simulation and skills they can work on. By the way, you don't need to use Jazz Hands as the stop word. You can use any stop word you want. Here is the example response that the presenter from Google got. This is one of the most interesting ways to interact with an AI tool because there are so many possibilities. And today, the experience is even better because you can now just talk to the AI agent instead of typing. If you were preparing for a job interview, you could even upload the job description from the company's job post and create an AI agent to ask you interview questions based on the job criteria, just like a real phone or Zoom interview. Another example, you could design a prompt to make the AI agent take on different roles that you might encounter across your organization and use it to simulate conversations, meetings, feedback sessions with your manager. You now know more about prompting than most people. As I mentioned at the start, if there's one thing context that you need to remember from reference. this course is the five-step framework. Task, context, reference, evaluate, iterate. I'm going to try create an AI business and put my learnings on this channel. So if you want to follow along and maybe even create your own AI business, don't forget to subscribe. I also have a community where you can DM me directly if you have any questions. Find the link in the description. Right now, we're at 90 members and the entry price is the price of a cup of coffee per month at $7. This price will keep increasing as we get more members and I keep adding more content to the community. So join early to secure the cheaper price. If you join now, you will be grandfathered into the $7 per month price forever. If you like this video, you're going to love this next one selected just for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.